Good morning and blessed Sunday. This is a multiple take. We tried a couple other times and had technical difficulties uh, with outside interference. Nothing big. Today's feast day is the feast of the Most Holy Trinity. And it is unique among all of our celebrations, I think, on the church calendar. And that we celebrate the mystery of God today rather than what God has done for us or who God is is for us, which are all good things to celebrate. That's why we should be grateful every day. Every day should be fueled by gratitude in the belief of how God has blessed us, what God has promised us, what God has done for us in terms of salvation. 99% of the heavy lifting done for redemption is by Jesus Christ. Our 1% or less than 1% that we call our life is our meager but deeply appreciated by God return. You know, I know know some of our brothers and sisters in Christ focus on all of our works as filthy rags. I, I hear that phrase a lot. And that's to keep us humble. I mean, we give God nothing that he needs. In fact, dealing with humanity if we've been paying any attention to the news for the last two weeks, put a highlight on how awful our behavior is to one another and to God. And the fact that we live in a predominantly godless society, we have a veneer of faith left on it. But the whole idea of the Holy Trinity and divine revelation is that God has a path revealed to us a way to live it, how to be a companion to others on the way, and a destination to arrive at, called home with him. Why didn't God just do that at the beginning? Something about this living process is what's unique about humanity. Otherwise, we'd be angels. We'd have a choice to be angelic beings. But we're not. We were created human beings. And we were given something the angels don't possess, And I don't know if they're envious of it or uh, just don't get it. It's time. We are creatures of time. Angels are creatures of eternity. So is God. Except Jesus Christ enters into time. As God the Father does in the Holy Spirit. All three persons of the Holy Trinity enter into time. Through revelation and their actions in the world. But Jesus Christ incarnates into time. And he feels the experience of being human. How time weighs on us. How time affects us. The whole cycle of sleeping and rising. Although I have to get the impression that Jesus didn't sleep much. That he only needed a few hours of sleep and he was good to go. Because the Gospels hint all the time that he goes off to pray at night most of the night, if not all of the night. But he must sleep at some point because all all human beings need sleep. And we would assume that, that he does. Because you can't call him a creature. He's a begotten, not a created. All creatures need sleep. I guess viruses don't. <laughs> but all higher life forms. But Jesus is not a creature, lest we forget he is a son, begotten, not created. As our creed states. But today is just a great feast day to celebrate that our God is a living, creative, redemptive, and sanctifying communion of divine persons. And that creation is the overflowing gift of that divine love that they share among themselves and is poured out to us. And if there's anything we want to do, Today, maybe, is to focus on how much we have in common with our brothers and sisters around the world as sons and daughters of one God. Right now, we're living in a time of focus on all the divisions. And I think the first thing we have to do when we see somebody is know that they are a brother or sister in Jesus Christ. 
then you'll probably notice the other thing, you know, gender, ethnicity, height, weight, clothing, appearances, things that seem in your mind normative, things in your mind that seem unusual. That's kind of how our mind works. And yet, let none of those ever take away the point that this is a brother or sister in Jesus Christ. Anyway, blessed feast day. And uh, have a good one. Keep cool. It was a burner yesterday. Hot here in New Melly.